Well, let's discuss the issue of immigration more broadly with my panel of guests here overlooking uh, the White House. We have Nena Gupta. She's policy director of the American Immigration Council, which is an organization working to create a society that values immigrants as vital contributors to the nation. And also Vanessa Cardenas. She's uh, director of America's Voice, an organization working to enact inclusive policy changes for immigrants and America for, for Amer immigrants in America. Um, both of you are trying to tell a positive story, and yet in this election campaign, Vanessa, it's a very negative story. This has become the most polarizing of issues. It's also the signature policy of Donald Trump and has been all the way since 2016. How much of that negative rhetoric, I mean, he, that's going around in the nation is down to some of the language he's been using, calling people, uh, calling, calling immigrants rapists, murderers, criminals who poison the blood of the United States. Right, right. Yeah, no, thank you for that question. You know, I think we can safely say that this is the uh, one of the most, if not the most, anti-immigrant presidential candidate in modern history. And the policies that he is espousing and promoting right now are some of the cr most cruel, most extreme, and most racist policies we have seen. Um, but here's the here the, I think three important points. One, m the United States needs to learn how to manage migration. That the focus needs to be on how do we effectively manage migration. Migration is a reality, not just in the United States but globally, and we need to be able to effectively manage. And, and we believe that we can do it. The second point is that um, the mass deportation ideas that Trump is promoting is actually not just about immigrants, but I think about American families. Five million um, U.S. kids have at least one undocumented parent. So when, when he talks about deporting um, immigrants, he's actually talking about affecting American families and our entire economy. So, you know, and then the other thing I want to say, you know, it feels like Trump is trying to rehash his own history with immigration. We know that under his administration, our immigration system was broken, just as it was before. Um, but he instituted very extreme policies like the Muslim ban, the family separations that the United, you know, the, the United States population actually was very much against. And he also um, instituted uh, policies like Title 42. And why? It's because he did not have control of the border. So I think it's really important for us to remember his record. Uh, and also the fact that right now he's using immigration as a political tool to agitate his base. So let me ask you, Vanessa, how much of this would you consider to be racism? Because if you go back in earlier in the U.S.'s history, there was discrimination against white people who came here, like, right. like, like Irish Americans, Polish Americans. It's, right. This has yeah. been around throughout the U.S.'s history, even though this is a country that was built on immigration. Listen, I'm an immigrant. I am very grateful to the United States for the opportunities that it has given me. Uh, I believe in the American dream. Um, so I believe there are many Americans who believe in our story as a nation of immigrants. But I do think he's tapping into sort of um, a lot of resentment, a lot of hate, a lot of racism. And he's elevating those narratives. You know, when he talks about great replacement theory, when he talks about invasion, when he talks about crime. So I think he is tapping into sort of those negative feelings and um, really making them worse. And that's problematic. And obviously, we always say Trump is not the cause. He's a symptom. Um, and I think that regardless of the outcome on Tuesday, we do have a, a huge problem in our country in how to reframe this issue. Because to be really uh, factual, the immigration story in the United States is a positive story of accomplishments, of hard work, of opportunity, of belief, you know, in what this nation has to offer. And Nana, do you think that the hostility to migrants increases with the media focus? And perhaps we had a perfect storm after COVID because we had the border effectively closed and then lots of people came at once, but also people in the US were suffering economic hardship. Do you think that made a, a sort of perfect storm at that time, which has led to even higher levels of hostility? Sure. I mean, I think those circumstances made it easy to scapegoat immigrant communities. As you've alluded to, we have a rich history of immigration in this country and immigrants if you look at the facts and the data, are essential to the prosperity and success of the American economy. There are one in eight immigrants here in this country today, and they contribute over $570 billion in taxes on an annual basis. Without immigrants, our economy can't function. 
And what, and what do you make of the argument some economists say that actually immigrants helped prevent a recession for Joe Biden? Absolutely, right? We have the data to show that immigration, for example, helps decrease inflation. We know, we've seen immigrants in states like Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, come into communities that have been in decline, repopulate those communities, revitalize them, make them attractive to U.S.-born residents. We have the data. We know that they are essential to the success of our economy. And some of those places, Vanessa, are places that we had a report from our colleague Rob Reynolds a moment ago from Charlois, Pennsylvania, but also Springfield, Ohio, right. where Haitians have helped the local community. That's right. And yet you know what Donald Trump said. He said yeah. they were eating cats and dogs. Yeah, and I think the other point here to make is that, you know, Trump is actually even against um, legal immigrants because in the case of Ohio, most of the Haitian community actually have legal status. They have temporary protection status. And, um, but yet he conflates, right, immigrants, because for him, we're just one. And I think um, that just shows, again, that he's not serious about solutions. And listen, you know, we are really hungry for a real and honest conversation about how to fix our immigration system in a way that works for America, but also is consistent with our values. But what Trump is offering is not that. You know, he is obstructing, he is agitating uh, hate and anger, and he is not taking us closer to the goal of having an immigration system that works for the United States. Nana, I think it's pretty fair to say the Democrats have shifted their policy in this election, and, and Kamala Harris herself seems to have been a 180-degree pivot from where she was in the primaries in 2020. Are you worried that no or neither of the parties are really giving a positive, a positive image of immigrants now? No, I think whoever ends up being our president, what we need are effective, fair, just solutions to a broken, outdated immigration system. There have not been updates to the immigration system since the 1990s. What we need are uh, new ideas and new ways to manage challenges, humanitarian challenges at the border. That means increasing resources for processing, fixing problems that we've seen with, the, with an app that CBP wants. CBP has been using to process asylum seekers. And we absolutely need pathways to citizenship um, for the very many undocumented people who live in our country. And that's true for whoever is our next president um, and whatever their platform may be right now. And if we can get past this rhetoric and this misinformation about the contributions immigrants make, then we can get to a conversation about what it looks like to legalize folks, to leverage the power and strength immigrants bring. Nana Vanessa, thank you so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. That's it from here in Washington, D.C. Back now to Sahel. Thanks very much, James.